All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Eagle Eye for Prophetic Perspectives with Art Lucier and friends. I am Art Lucier. Okay, get ready. You know, our, our last uh, Eagle Eye was with Archer Pulowski. If you miss that, this is a must. You must go and watch Eagle Eye with Archer Pulowski. Uh, the one before that was Charlie Robinson. You got to watch that. Or the one with Grant Abraham before that. Just like we're, we're, we, um, we, are, we are contending for what true faith is, what the true fire of God is, and what true freedom is. And, and here at the Canadian Firewall, we just, first of all, I just want to say thank you guys for being part of the Canadian Firewall for the last two years. As we enter year three, it's ramping up. It's heating up out there. Um, the darkness is increasing, but you know, you know the story, you know the side of God, the story here. God wins, but here's here's the truth. The answer to the darkness is always oil and fire. As in Matthew 25, the virgins woke up, trimmed their lamps, and uh, lit that flame in the middle of the night. Darkness is here. It's not going away anytime soon, but the answer is the oil. The, the oil of God's presence, the Holy Ghost and in the fire of god and i'm that's what we're praying for you and listen today's program um i'm going to get right to it we um i just met an individual here talked to him a little bit about his story probably more of his story is going to unfold <laughs> right here um this program is designed to uh, what do we pray for what are some things going on right now real time what are some of the truth tellers speaking about what are some of the things that I can prophetically pray into? What, what's, what are some of the things? That, if we would have known the fight coming for our children was like it was, like, and if we would have been a little bit more awake, maybe we would have done something about it. And you can probably agree to that, or agree with that. Yeah, we're praying, we're, we're praying for righteousness and justice within school system and the law courts and blah, 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 and all of our laws. But truth of the matter is, uh, at some point, we got to wake up, stand up, and we actually have to um, voice our opinion, and we have to make a stand. Today, I have a, on our program such a such a, 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 a guy who's made a stand, a very interesting. You're going to get to know this guy. Um, listen, in the end times here, as things are changing and shifting, and as there is a war for the sovereignty of our nation, as there is a war for the dominion of Canada, as it was so named 155 years ago. There's going to be different ones who come to the forefront and different freedom fighters, truth tellers that we have been praying for. And listen, some of you are just more comfortable praying through the night on different teams, and we need that. We need you. We also need the truth tellers to come forward. We need those who are on the front lines, like the Arthur Pulowskis, like the Henry Hildebrands, like the Tamara Leeches. We need these ones, and God has called and ordained them, and you at home, I charge you to pray for them. Well, without further ado, this brings us to our next guest on Eagle Eye Prophetic Perspectives. Uh, some of you know him very well, and some of you are just going to get to know him. His name is Marcus Ray. Marcus Ray, I want to welcome you to Kelowna Harvest Studios here in Kelowna, uh, to Eagle Eye Prophetic Perspectives. We just met today. Is that we did. Is that not true? That's just true. That's that, true. That, that's, that's, Matt. that's right on. So, Marcus, um, you know, I've heard about you. A lot of, uh, especially freedom fighters, have, have heard about you. I don't even know if freedom fighter is the right term, but we're just going to use it for the sake of a, a lack of a better one that today. But, um, you know, and of course, uh, Americans talk about, you know, patriotism and, and the, uh, being a patriot. You know, we were talking, our Canadian firewall fasted for the first 22 days this year on day 23, a convoy starts from the west, ends up in Ottawa. The highway was lined. We're gonna come. We're gonna actually. We're gonna come back to that. I need. I need a little bit about you. A little bit of uh, history. A little bit of history. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, okay. You're a man of God. I am. I most certainly am. Wonderful. Yep. So uh, we need more of them. We 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 need a lot of them right days. now. And you recently came off a tour. I did. I did. I went across four provinces and uh, spoke to the crowds. Uh, which were the amazing numbers of people that showed up uh, to speak about uh, the solution, not just the problem. I think we're we're talking about the problem too much, and I think we have to address the solution. 
And the solution is all hands on deck. The solution is critical mass. The solution is for Canada to stand up as one and end the madness. And let's save the men and women and children, especially the children who, uh, who don't have a choice in what they do. Uh, a lot of times they're being guided by an adult. And if the adult is misled, that child is in danger. So spreading that word and what the solution for that is, which is we all stand together. And we all stand together and, and we'll, critical mass. I love the term. We've critical used mass. it. We yeah. used it for battle for Canada. Yeah. The Lord spoke to me about a critical mass. In fact, when we did our very first battle for Canada, many of you were there. Um, uh, and you've heard me say this. The Lord told me to put out a thousand chairs. There were a thousand people there night after night for 10 days, gray haired people, ones who had seen and watched what Canada <laughs> was and what it had become. And they, they showed up to say, is there still hope for the nation? And as we invited the Spirit of God, God came and brought some hope. So now you're trying to bring hope. Now listen, what is, what is, so you're saying a critical mass to do what? Well, what we first have to do is attempt to go into a court on a, in a peaceful fashion. Um, and I've got someone that wants to do that, that we are helping to get in there. Christopher James is his name, who understands common law. Uh, we're going to get him into the court and hopefully he's going to have his chance to ask the questions. Uh, the questions being number one was SARS two uh, purified. Was it, was it, you know, um, I don't understand the language, I'm not going to claim to, um, but are we, are we men and women of the land of God or are we subjects to this tyrannical government? We have to decide who we are. Well, we are men and women of this land. That's who we are. We are not subjects to the Corporation of Canada. And he's going to separate those. Now, if given the chance, he will expose the truth. If not given the chance, we have to be on the outside of this court and we have to stand for that answer. In other words, there's not an option for our government not to give us an answer. We have to stand for that answer and we have to stand in faith and not show fear. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 it does. So your rallies, you just went, you were gone for a couple of weeks. You uh, you put on a lot of miles just like I do. Oh. And and so you're you're speaking in all kinds of venues. Yep. Yep. Uh, RCMP do show up there. They do. We invite them. You invite them? Sure we do. Yeah. Yeah, we invite them because it's not anything against them. The secret to us um, gaining our freedom, the secret to us saving this country and the people in it, are going to be the men and women in uniform. What do you see coming against the country? Like, what have you experienced yourself? Like, this is, this is kind of a well. Of course, for a lot of us, like, well, don't you know? Well, I want, I'm, you know, a couple of years ago, yeah. you experienced. We all experienced lockdowns. What have you seen? What happened? And why are you making a stand today? I'm making a stand today because the the people that believe they're in power have used fear. And they've taken fear as a weapon and they have tried to control the masses and the masses that have fallen under the spell of, of the narrative that they're selling. What has happened here is that they have pulled the wool over their eyes. They have put them in darkness. Our tyrannical government has literally covered us in darkness. Now, some of us know where the light is, so we move out of it. We automatically move out of that darkness. I heard you mention the darkness before. These are dark times, but those of us that can see, and quite frankly, the way I see is I close my eyes to the darkness and I can see the light within. That's how I do it. I just have to close my eyes. It's not there anymore. I can see the light within. I move that way. Those of us that can see, we're, we're standing on the outside. We know the darkness is there. We know it exists and we know what it's doing. We know what it's doing to others, but it's not affecting us in the same way. And that's why we're strong enough in our faith to be able to pull the others out of the darkness because we're not in it because we're already protected. We're already protected by our faith, our belief. This is what I believe. I have no idea what you believe yet. We just met. Sure. <laughs> but this is what I believe. And what I'm doing is I'm going based on that feeling it gives me, which is there's a, a lot of us that have had the calling and that is the calling to pull the others out of the darkness. And to do that, we have to convince them of this other truth over here that they're not with that truth yet they want to be they 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 have the urge to be but they can't see it as clear as we can see it 
And that's where we have to help. That's what the meetings are about. It's about everybody standing together in one day, in one moment, one moment in time. We could change the history of this entire country in one moment if we all stand at the same time. By making a stand. Critical having, mass. Critical mass. Making a stand. So now part of the darkness that you're talking about and the fear and, and, uh, and, and you're even talking about SARS, the science. So um, all used to perpetuate fear. It's they just told you to shut down your businesses. That's right. Yeah. Uh, they told you to bow to the science. Yep. But never showed you the science. But they never showed you the science. Bow to the science, but never showed you the science. So how can you, how can you believe so much in something that you haven't been shown the proof? We are critical thinking human beings, which means if I tell you I got five bucks in my po pocket, I have to prove it by pulling the five out. Otherwise, you're blindly believing me. So where is the science? I've heard it over and over again. Uh, we've heard Trudeau say it. We've heard Bonnie Henry say it. Trust in the science. I can trust in something if you show it to me. If you can't show it to me, then how can I trust in it? Now, when it comes to faith, I trust in it because I feel it. Now, in the same sentence, I feel they're lying. So how can I trust a feeling that tells me they're lying. I think it's safe to say that the remnant and the, the the remnant that are coming out, the majority of the remnant, all know and understand that there is a um, a very uh, dark agenda. There is a, a takeover of of the nation of Canada uh, that is trying to happen. We see it right before our eyes. We're not going to get too much in, into that per se. Um, but I want to, I want to, uh, just a little bit about you here. And we're going to come back to that because, um, you're, you're a man who's standing. We need, we need people like, like Marcus who stand. We need people like Arthur and Henry Hildebrandt and Tamara Leaches, these ones who stand. We need to pray for them. This is one of the reasons I brought Marcus on the show. Remember the name Marcus Ray. You need to pray for him. Pray for him, and I'm I, I I'm I'm not even going to go into all that he's going through right now, but uh, you need to pray for him. But also, Marcus Ray, you know we all have a past. No. Uh, my, I um I in the '80s my girlfriend was murdered in a drug deal go wrong, um and I was a suspect for five months because they didn't know who it was. I didn't have a proper alibi because I was drunk that night, and instead of committing suicide because we had a daughter together and we gave up for adoption, um. I, I called up to God and he saved me. Now, I've got a bit of a, you know, and there's other mistakes I made along the way. By the grace of God, I'm still married. I'll just say, say it like that. But, you know, tell us a little bit of snapshot about your past. You're an author. I, I am an author and I became an author because of experiences that I had. And I'm not, I'm not claiming to be a great author, but um, yeah. <laughs> I wrote a book called Seven Years of Skin. And what that was about, uh, look straight at the camera when I say it, is uh, I was a male stripper. I was actually Mr. Nude North America and uh, did seven years uh, of that. Mr. Nude and, North America. Yeah, yeah. You want to talk about living in the darkness, buddy. <laughs> what year was that? <laughs> that was uh, 1982 to 1988. 81 to 88. Yeah, 81 to 88. 88. Uh, 81 to 88. Yeah. All right. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So, yeah. yeah. So anyway, I've seen uh, some places. I've seen places, and I've seen uh, the darkness. I, um, when I got so down after being in there five and a half, to almost six years, I, uh, I drove my Corvette into a brick wall on purpose. On purpose. On purpose. I'm not afraid to say it now, but on purpose, and that that almost ended me. Um, but uh, you know, I climbed out of that. I it, it got me straight. I I definitely became uh, a very spiritual person after that. Uh, when I realized that I had a second chance. And uh, then for the, the the rest of the term, mostly an entrepreneur, um, I, I joined the RCMP as a reserve officer and did six years of that. Um, so I understand and sympathize and respect men and women in uniform and always will. Uh, even after being in Ottawa for that, that whole thing, I, I still respect them because we had the thugs in Ottawa. We did not have uh, the men and women in uniform that have dedicated their lives to keeping people safe. They were the other ones. And, um, you know, as an entrepreneur, I failed. I failed a couple of times and I failed big. 
and I, I had court cases, I had bankruptcies, I had it all. They want to throw that at me now saying that I should not be a person speaking up for freedom and everything else. But, but I challenge that saying, this is something that I survived. And if I'm still here now as a God fearing man, and I understand my past and I accept it. And it has everything that I have done in the past adds up to what I am now, which is giving me the capability to speak the capability to be humble. Uh, my humility is intact and I can speak to people and m help them understand why we have to stop this madness now before it gets to a point where we can't stop it. Where do you think it's all going? This when is going, this is going to what I call modern slavery. If we don't stop it, this is going to be slavery. Our, our children are being indoctrinated right now as we speak in the schools and the educational system. Um, I used to think for years that the moral foundation of this country and many other countries was cracking on its own. Then I realized they were breaking it apart right beneath our feet. Right. They've been through the education system, through the mainly. education system, through the media. Right. I mean, just the way that they are taking the mindset of our youth and twisting it so that they believe in something else being morally correct. Whereas we were over here, they're twisting it to become this. Now you and I are wrong. Now you and I, we're, we're prejudiced. No, we're not. We're just, we're standing on the morals that we grew up with. We're standing on the morals of a society that could stay solid and, and could stay, stay in the, walk in the, in the path of the believers. But no, that's not allowed now. You see, so that's all changed. And if they change that, what they're doing is they're twisting us into something else. And with all this new science, uh, they say, trust the science of the MNRA or whatever the hell it is. It's yeah. what you're telling us is you're changing God's DNA right now. You're, you're making us not in the image of God anymore. That's how I look at it. You're changing us. Well, not thus, not those of us who haven't taken it, right? but those who've taken it, they're changing themselves in the eye. You're no longer in the image of God. You're changing your DNA. You're changing your makeup. To me, that is the devil collecting souls. I don't know how else to explain it, but that's what I believe. Right. That's just a way to collect the souls long before you need to take them. You know, just for our audience, many of you know the name Bill Johnson, one of the greatest, most beloved apostolic teachers in, in the world. I listened to him, at least I used, used to when I had time, used to listen to him all the time. He was recently on the Fateen show, and Bill Johnson made this statement. He goes, the uh, the shot, the vaccine, the, the mRNA, uh, it's not even a vaccine. It's a no. protein blocker. It's, it's, it's unproven science. And that, you know, that was your conviction to take it for a job, whatever. Okay. Um, we, we, we had... There's every once of us that said, "Don't." That's fine. You did. That's. I sympathize. Yeah, I we sympathize. We I do. do. You, had, I do. You, you know, you you're losing your livelihood or whatever. And they say we didn't force anyone. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't force anyone. Yeah, we'll yeah. just take away your livelihood and your life. But this is what Bill says: it is not the mark of the beast, but it's setting it up. And we're telling you, Canada, there's something darker coming. There are dark. They are. They they like Marcus has said. They've indoctrinated our kids. Mm -hmm. They have. They've slowly changed the media. Forty years, fifty years, maybe longer, and and the generations who started with this darkness and knew that they were part of a plan mm -hmm. to change the culture and to demonize anyone who would stand up. They're long. They're dead. But the Satan doesn't care about them. He cares to take you and our kids out he's still rolling through people the darkness maybe those people who started but now th these new ones are alive and they are just capitalized and it's just going darker faster darker faster one of the things that i say in, when i'm giving a speech and i'll do it tonight actually um when we get together again is i talk about a painting that used to be in the louvre uh in paris and this painting it's the devil and he's playing chess with a man and you see the devil and he's laughing 
you see the chessboard and you see the man. Now the man is not looking at the board. He's got his hands in his face. The name of the painting is Checkmate. Now you would believe that the devil is winning based on his reaction, the man's reaction and the name of the painting. Tour group comes in. Gentleman stands in front of the painting. The tour group moves on. He stays there and he's looking at the painting and he's looking and he's going, yeah, no, something's wrong. Tour guide comes back and says, excuse me, sir, what is wrong? He said, well, you're going to have to change the painting or change the name of it. Because as you can see, it says check. It says me. check me. Now, there's the devil. He's laughing. It says checkmate. Man's got his face in his hands. Well, that would make you think the devil's won. But I probably didn't mention to you that I'm a world champion chess player. Now, I'm looking at that painting, and I see something totally different. What I see is I see, yeah, yeah, the devil's laughing for no reason right now. The man has got his hands in his face, and if he took his hands off his face, he would look at the board and see what I see, that the king has one more move. So, ladies and gentlemen, take your hands off your face, take a good look, and you'll see we have one more move, and the next move's ours. So let's take it. Do you hear that, Canada? Did you hear that, Canada? Yeah. So here, hey, for you thousand or plus intercessors who are going to be seeing this, um, let us pray from a place of faith. It's not, we're, we're making a stand. Listen, there is, um, oh, and, and something else is kind of really cool. We just recently passed our two-year birthday of the Canadian Firewall on June 24th at 7 a.m. Moments later, at 7.14 from CNN, they uh, probably bereaved them to make the announcement on June 24th, 7 a.m., 7.16 a.m., uh, Pacific Standard Time, Roe versus Wade was overturned. This is a big deal. This is an answer to prayer of 50 years. I'm going to tell you something. Darkness is increasing, and there's simply a divide. Goats from the sheep left and right, and... Um, and there is an awakening happening. And I'm going to tell you something else. Three years ago when we were in Battle for Canada, Edmonton, and we showed the movie Unplanned for the first time, and we got uh, we, we 12,000 signatures came in to, or letters came in to, to Cineplex to show the movie Unplanned, and we won, and they showed it. Um, the Lord spoke something very clear. Those who stand for life will be protected as, in, as the children were in Goshen. Remember, when darkness came on Egypt and judgments, the children of God went in Goshen. When it was dark in Egypt, it was light in Goshen. When there was a plague of flies in Egypt, there was no flies in Goshen. There is a there is there 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 is a there is a stand being taken, being made, and we and God wants to show Himself strong. Not we're not relying on religion or just religious services anymore, and saying I'm a good person, leave me alone, and I just want to go. And I just want to go do my job. But now there's actually a stand having to made, be made like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel was a lion's den. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel 9, uh, chapter 3, they made a stand. They wouldn't bow. They, they wouldn't bow. And they said, King, we don't care if you even throw us in the fire. Uh, or the king said, I'm going to throw you in the fire. We don't care. God will save us. Even if he didn't, we're not bowing. Even if he didn't save us, we're not bowing. Now, there's something when we originally talked about an hour ago, you said we have to be willing to die. Like, let's just cut right to the chase. Uh, let's cut right to the chase. I the, mean, uh, it, it, this, this is a war of faith. That's what this is. This is good against evil. This is a war of faith. Uh, it's the spiritual war. If you can't see that, then, then you're not seeing the purpose in standing and putting your life on the line and taking death as as the end of this life to move to that next but you've stood for a reason you've stood for the right reason we are stand if, if we stand and, and i'll say the children at first i mean like i said uh, men and women have a choice they can make choices children can't make that choice they're not given it they're an adult is guiding them we have to stand for the children we don't have a choice in that because they're the innocents. They are the 100% innocent. 
innocence in this. Not that there's not innocent men and women, but they're falling subject to the, the narrative and they're not doing their due diligence. They're not uh, checking the, the rest of us. We do a little bit of research. We find the truth. So they have an opportunity to find the truth. The children don't. They're That's going to right. listen to an adult. So I do focus on the children a little bit more in the fact that these innocents are being targeted and they're being targeted by evil. So the only way that we can stand up against evil is to put our physical lives aside, put it aside, stand on faith. We can do this together, stand on faith. If enough of us stand up on faith, if, if a third of the adult population, which is 11 million people or so, stand up on one day and say, don't touch those children, enough's enough, we're going to end this now in a peaceful manner, and we're going to hold those accountable to justice. We, you, you've, you've got to be accountable. You and I are accountable for everything we do and say. No reason why they're not to. We have to end this, and we have to end it by, by believing, by having faith, and putting your life on the line. And that's all it'll take. We have a government and an educational system that are actually abusing kids. Yeah. <laughs> now we can fully say it. They're abusing kids. Yeah. You know, um, I, I love what um, uh, there's one, there's this liberal talk show host. So I, I wish I seen this. Thing. I seen this meme the other day. I'm like, he goes, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful, you know, that, uh, that I didn't grow up, you know, um, in today's society uh, as a kid, he goes, when I was eight years old, I wanted to be a pirate. He goes, but I'm very thankful that my parents didn't, you know, pluck out an eye and chop off one of my legs to make me a peg leg. So I could really be a pirate, you know, and that, that's, it's half a joke, Yeah. but it's like these kids, like my sister was a tomboy till grade seven. Yeah. She hated even wearing a shirt. And then when grade seven came along, what uh, yeah. she had to, and she beat up the boys. She like today, what would they do to her? Now there's kids in schools being being forced and, and it, it being cool that, that they uh, transition, that they don't like them, that they're a girl or a boy. It's child abuse and something's got to be done. This is yeah. we, a stand has to be made. Something's coming. We have to stand. If we say we're children or people of God or that we um, that we uh, believe in righteousness, um, a stand does have to be made. Art, if we don't, if we don't choose, um, and, and we, we spoke earlier and what we said was they made a mistake. I told you they left the gray hairs here, all the gray hairs. <laughs> We're the sons and daughters of warriors. They should have waited 15 to 20 years. They did it too early. But this is what I say. If, if we, if, <laughs> if we don't take this battle on you and I, and people like us, people in our age group, if yeah. we don't fight the battle, it's our children that will end up fighting the war. Our grandchildren will fight the war, and the generations to come will fight the war because there's always going to be a resistance, but we could beat it right now because we are the sons and daughters of the warriors that won the freedom in the first place. We're the ones to hold on to it, to hand it down to the kids. That's what I believe. Wow. So to our intercessors, there is, um, we're running out of time. You saw what happened in Ottawa. I was there. It was revival in the streets. That was, that was something to be seen. And that was, uh, that was a one big learning curve. Everyone I talked to say it was like reading acts, the apostles, the revival of like, there was no need amongst them. Jesus preached on the corner. Instead of there was just like, yep. and there was just this big family atmosphere. It was beautiful. Bouncy castles. We had it all going on. Barbecues. In minus 30, minus 40. In minus 30, 40. <laughs> <laughs> and no one, no one went hungry. No, no. The, the homeless were fed. Uh, everyone was fed. Uh, there was uh, tents set up the cooking constantly, like all day, well, well into the night they were cooking and giving food out. It was, it was an amazing experience. And Jesus was preached right from the backs of trucks. Absolutely, right from the backs of trucks, from the stages uh, on every corner, on every corner. It was amazing. It was it was the most fascinating. It, that was the proudest Canadian moment I have ever had in my life because Canada and faith came together. 
it was it was an unbelievable month. You got goosebumps walking around there at night. Goosebumps. It was amazing. And you were there for the last few days of it. But then <clears throat> what happened? Uh, well, then, then, oddly enough, um, they sent in the troops. And I don't call them police. I uh, They were mercenaries. They were all sorts of people. They had uniforms on with no markings on them whatsoever. And, uh, and the people... The people basically faced off against them, but in a in more of a faith manner, where where no one swing, no one fight back, uh, and some people on bullhorns were saying to the the officers of whoever they were, you know, we love you, we're not going to fight you, da, da da da. And what did they do? Swing clubs at everybody, rifle butted people. It was it was disgusting. It was the most disgusting thing I've ever seen, because our leadership ordered it. So, so this, this Trudeau fellow, I call him silly socks, by the way, it's just easier for me. He, he gave the command to hit and abuse and brutalize innocent Canadians, men, women, children, didn't matter. They didn't care. Believe me, I saw it. They didn't care. When the horses came and, and started running into people and running people over, they didn't care. The people on the horses were laughing on the inside. You, I'm telling you right now. And when I stared in the eyes of uh, one of the guys in the green jumpsuits, all I saw was, was cold black soul. I didn't see anything that would make me believe that I was staring at a human being. I can honestly say that in, in, in the experience that I had, standing there in the freezing cold, staring right at this person with his shield against my hat, I did not recognize a human being. I didn't see one. So that in itself should tell us what we're up against. We're up against evil, my friend. Pure evil. <clears throat> and this the, is our moment. The day of um, churchianity is over. Marcus, I truly believe that what we've had with, with our sleepy church for 100 years in Canada is like, well, I like this flavor. I like this denomination. I like this. So I don't like it too loud. Oh, I like it. Uh, I like it louder. And everyone's like, well, I'll go there if the coffee's good or I'll, <laughs> and if, if someone looks me wrong, I'll leave the church and just like the, those days yeah. I'm like, that's not even the kingdom of God. That's not making a stand. That's not being led of the spirit. That's not ha being in filled up with the power of God. It's not revival. That's not, that is not the ecclesia that Jesus talked about. The emerging ecclesia is coming to the surface, but unfortunately, we're in a war. You can't don't and we can't stick our head in the in the sand anymore. It's here. It's for our kids, and God is looking for some people to make a stand. We don't know exactly when or what this looks like, but we are making a stand. We're making a stand with our Faith Fire Freedom Festivals, um, August 11th to the 14th. We're doing one there in Moose Jaw. Mark Friesen, some different ones coming out. And, and it's about the kingdom of God, salvations, uh, evangelism. You know, a lot of these ones who lined the street, the, uh, the the number one. By the way, you were on the number one and you saw people there. Two in the morning. Hundreds of thousands of people, four-year-olds in snowsuits, waving flags that were 10 times their size. It was amazing. God wants to amazing. do a sweep of souls. Uh, like, see, it's it's you, you, uh, if you could get to heaven... By being good, Jesus would have said, okay, everyone just be good because I don't want to have to die. Jesus died, and it says, whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus died for something, and he had to die to pay for our sins. But it says, but we have to repent of our own. And you know what? We, we, you need to pray for us. Mm. You need to pray for these rallies that Jesus has preached and people actually repent of their sins and actually invite God back into the nation. We need God. We've left him. We've kicked him out slowly over 60 years. Slow indoctrination. And it's now, but it's picking up speed now. Yeah, it is. It is. So what's, mean, the, what's the next step for you? Uh, I've got to keep pushing for critical mass. I go uh, across Canada again. I leave in uh, two and a half weeks, roughly. And I'll be going across Canada right uh, coast to coast and building that critical mass that we're going to need uh, to make this day work. And that day is coming fast. It has to be... Uh, well, it, I, I can tell you, it has to be before winter because once the darkness of winter comes in, you know what it's like. Yeah. The moods of everyone changes. The uh, um, every, Everything within you um, becomes more of a depressing nature in winter than it does in summer. 
and we've got to move while the lights at our backs while while we've got something lighting our path and i think that if we go too far they're going to clamp down on us september october is what i firmly believe from the information i've gotten and i think that we're we could be we could be looking at another major lockdown with a whole other virus being added in there um if you are a person that is in fear of these multiple viruses that they keep creating and throwing at us you've really got to think for a minute that our bodies are absolute amazing our bodies can take so much and it can repair itself and i think you'll find that your body your immune system everything about you is stronger everything about your faith is stronger if you just let god's work do it for you and nothing added because I got through everything without anything added. You did. Yeah. And uh, got my butt kicked for a few days. Sure but you, you know did. what? Sure God's did. God's built an immune system. Yeah. You know, um, this darkness, this China virus or whatever, this weaponized virus. You know what? Um, do not fear. Don't do fear. not fear. Do not fear. And even going forward, as it says in Revelation 12, and we've said it with Dean Briggs, different ones on the reset. You've heard us. We simply, we cannot fear death. We must stand for Jesus. We must stand for what is right. We must stand for righteousness, snake. We must stand for our kids. We must stand for 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 for, for righteousness sake. Yeah. We must stand for justice. Now's the time. And so this has been just awesome. Um, just with, with just getting to know you, getting to meet you. Mm -hmm. I know that we're going to, there's a, a day of what 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 are you not a day of reckoning? No, What's I the would day say, uh, call, being called that's coming? What's the day called? We don't really call it anything as much as uh, we're saying. We call it the stand. The uh, stand. We yeah. just nicknamed it the stand because it's the day when we're going to bring Canadians from all over this country all into one spot. And we're going to stand um, for freedom, for, the, for saving our children, uh, to end the madness. We're going to stand. And this is the important thing is when we stand, we can't move. We, we cannot afford to back up like Ottawa. Ottawa, the people there were not prepared. We, As a group, we were not prepared for what happened. But now you've shown us what you will do. Now we're prepared. And I don't mean that in an aggressive way. Yeah. Of course not. What I mean is when we stand, we understand what happens next. Now we've seen it. We know what's coming and we understand it. Now we are capable of holding our ground. We're not trying to push forward. We're not trying to be aggressors. And we certainly don't want any violence whatsoever. But we have to stand our ground. And what my idea is, uh, well, I never went over this with you, but yeah, if sorry. you don't mind, I'll just go ahead. Okay. Yeah, what my just, idea drop is drop this. It all out. We're going to get a line of officers in front of us once again. Uh, it will happen exactly the same way. The Emergency Act will come in. They'll want to move this large group of people, and we're not moving, so that they will line up in front of us, and, and we already know that they are the aggressors, not us. And what I want is the opportunity. I want, I want to take this one chance to extend the olive branch. I want to speak to the commanding officer and have all my people standing with me, They've got their people standing with them. And I want to show that officer something. I'm going to turn around to my people and I'm going to ask everyone to go down on one knee. Everybody, everyone goes down on one knee, the whole crowd, however many people are there. We all go down on one knee. I'm going to turn back to that officer and I'm going to say, you and I have a chance, man or woman, I don't know. We have an opportunity right now. We have an opportunity to show the world, Canada and the world, what can be done when people realize that we're only on this earth for two reasons to love and be loved that's it we make the rest up now i don't want to fight my people don't want to fight we've gone down on one knee to prove that we are not here to fight now imagine what the world will see you sir or you ma'am if you turn to your troops and have them go down on one knee we will have just won the freedom of all the people in the world in one movement, one. And I believe God would look down and smile on that. Now, that's what I want to believe in. And that's why I tell everybody the secret to our freedom, the secret to our futures of our children and generations to come. The secret is the men and women in uniform that realize that we all stand for the same thing. And we stand in the eyes of God and we stand in faith. 
And when we go down on one knee, it's not to show vulnerability, but it's to humble ourselves before God. And whatever comes next, he's in control. That's it. What do you think of that? Wow. Well, you've heard it. You know what to pray for. And you know that God has different men and women and leaders and truth tellers coming forward. All of them. We need to pray for them all. Doesn't matter of, of, of what political stance they have or just like, you know, whether they're involved in politics or not. This is, but we need to pray for the truth tellers. We need to pray for the purposes and the will of God. You know, as you guys remember, you know, um, the Canadian flag was flown by 100,000 people, like on the side of the highway. Yeah. It says in Revelation 22, 2, the leaves will be used for the healing of the nations. There's only one flag in all the world with a leaf on it. It's the Canadian flag. Mm -hmm. It's got a leaf. In Revelation 22, 2, the leaves will be used for the healing of the nations. Is it possible that a stand in this nation from God-fearing people who stand for for faith, like, and even the flag of Louis Riel that was flown a hundred, you know, 37 years ago, that first, the very first Aboriginal flag was said, Maison à tous, surtout liberté, which means we, 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 we stand for our children and our families for religious freedom and above all freedom and liberty for all. Is it possible that God has an ordained stand coming? Well, stay tuned. Stay tuned. We'll let you know and and um, and uh, when, where, how, what, because we're figuring this out as we go. A stand needs to be made for for righteousness' sake and for this nation of Canada, or do we just uh, uh, keep? Do we just remain asleep in our sleepy little churches? If I may add, yeah. we can't remain asleep simply because, and we do owe this to the truckers' convoy. The truckers' convoy lit a spark around the world. They lit the spark and everyone looked at Canada and went, look at what they're doing. And we need to take that spark now and use it to light the beacon of truth and hope so that the world sees now that Canada will set an example of how we save all the generations to come, how we save our country, and they will turn around and save theirs based on what they saw. I firmly believe it. I think that we are the tip of the sword. Well, there you have it, you guys. Well, Marcus, uh, incredible to meet you. And um, I feel this, like we're friends right away. Right away. <laughs> Fantastic. We all both got an interesting past. Interesting. <laughs> Thank God for the, the blood of Jesus and um, and uh, and and the call. And you know, uh, our, our past doesn't define our future. I don't think the Lord calls upon perfect men or women to do his bidding. I think he calls upon those he think can make it happen. That's good. That's very good. Well, all right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank in you. Studio I appreciate today. it. And, uh, thank you. And get, we'll, you'll hear more from Marcus Ray in time. Um, thanks for joining on this broadcast. All right. Bye now.